Hello and Namaste everyone, it's me Pratima and today I have the successor of the very popular Oppo Reno 7 Pro, the Reno 8 Pro with me which I've been using for a little over a week now. Honestly, I have not reviewed a lot of Oppo devices lately and it's not because the company hasn't launched new phones. Far from it actually. They have a wide lineup of phones in their budget A series, then there's the F series in the mid range segment, and we also have the premium mid range Reno lineup, and of course, the flagship Find X phones. But I think most of the Oppo A series and F series devices are pretty much a ripoff. I mean, just look at the recently launched Oppo A77 and even the Oppo F21 Pro. Those are ridiculous prices for what the phones offer. However, the Reno series is quite the opposite. I feel like with this series, Oppo is going in the right direction. I really like the Oppo Reno 7 Pro and the Reno 8 Pro builds up on that. This phone, in my opinion, is a very balanced offering that Oppo has put out and in this video, I will talk about all the things that they have done right with this device and the things that uh, they could have done better. So let's get started. The first thing that Oppo has nailed here is the design. I mean, just look at it. It's one hell of a gorgeous looking phone. I am really digging this iPhone-like boxy form factor too. And uh, what I appreciate here is that Oppo has struck a balance between good heft and a fairly lightweight body, which in turn makes the phone feel premium and comfortable to hold at the same time. Also, there are these nifty little things like this green accented power button, which adds to the pleasing aesthetics even more. But the one design thing that I am not particularly awed with is these huge camera modules. I think they're just out there and don't fully complement the design. And I wish the buttons here were a bit more tactile. Their feedback is not bad per se, but I didn't exactly enjoy using them that much. Other than that, I am quite impressed with how significantly even and thin the bezels on the screen are. I feel like it makes uh, quite a lot of difference when watching videos as the contents looks more immersive here. The overall quality of this display is excellent too. As expected from an AMOLED panel, it has good contrast and the colors appear very pleasing thanks to the 10-bit color depth and 100% DCI-P3 coverage. I also found HDR playback to work flawlessly on all streaming platforms. Visibility-wise, this is not the brightest screen, but it's um, fair enough for indoor as well as casual outdoor usage, so I would not complain so much about it. Now, before moving forward, let me talk a little about our sponsor. Did you know that you can buy Windows 11 license for $3 or less thanks to our sponsor Royal CD Keys? Besides, it also sells a wide range of PC and console games alongside subscriptions for PlayStation Plus and Xbox Live membership. There's even an additional 10% off for our viewers when using the code GADGET at checkout. You can learn more by clicking the link given in the description or just scan the QR code on the screen. Now back to the video, performance wise, you will not find any complaints on the Reno 8 Pro actually. It is powered by the Dimensity 8100 Max chipset, which is pretty much the same as the regular 8100, but with improved AI capabilities, gaming stability, and low light video performance. Just a few weeks back, I reviewed the Realme GT Neo 3 that comes with Dimensity 8100 chip, and I found it to be one of the finest MediaTek chipsets out there in the premium segment. And with the Reno 8 Pro 2, I got similar results. It is as fast as a flagship phone would perform, but more importantly, it does not heat up as much, which is something to appreciate because high-end processors like the Snapdragon 888 Plus or the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 all suffer from heating and throttling issues. The Dimensity 8100, however, does not have such profound issues when it comes to heating. As a result, the sustained performance levels that the Reno 8 Pro provides are quite commendable. And thanks to the 12GB RAM, even when doing heavy tasks or keeping apps in memory for a long time, the phone does not show signs of distress. And running graphic-intensive games is no trouble for this phone either. I played Genshin Impact here and it was able to provide stable 30fps at the highest graphic settings with little to no stutters. I will admit that playing it in the highest possible settings with 60fps more turned on was not a smooth ride and the phone got quite hot near the camera module. But considering Genshin Impact is a very demanding game, I can cut some slack to the Reno A Pro. 
Comparatively less taxing titles like PUBG Mobile run smoothly with 4D FPS yield in HDR graphics and ultra frame rates. Oppo has even optimized this game to run at 90 FPS where I was able to get stable 89 FPS throughout my gaming sessions. But you have to know that Oppo is yet to optimize many games to run at 120fps. I played Mortal Kombat and Rayman Adventures, both of which were stuck at 60fps. However, with future updates, we can expect more games to be optimized for higher FPS gameplay on this phone. Anyway, Oppo has worked a lot on its software too. The phone comes with Android 12 out of the box with ColorOS 12.1 on top and the experience is actually very smooth here. I uh, feel like when it comes to software, people are kind of harsh towards ColorOS because once upon a time it was really heavy and unpolished. But now it has evolved quite a lot when it comes to user experience. You can practically change the entire look and feel of the UI since you have so many customization options here and the ui just feels so fast and fluid so oppo has done some good optimization as far as ui and ux is concerned by this i don't mean that oppo software has become the gold standard or anything though there still are things that oppo needs to improve on such as the commitment for software updates for reno series oppo promises just two years of major os and four years of security updates which is less than what other brands pledge I also found this bug on the Reno 8 Pro where uh, this phone is not able to handle switching between refresh rates that well in many apps. For instance, when uh, turning the 120Hz refresh rate option on, the UI runs smoothly at 120Hz, but when you open apps like Facebook and Twitter, they run at 90Hz for some reason, while Instagram constantly switches between 60 to 120Hz. Google Play Store, on the other hand, runs at 90Hz, but feels very stuttery somehow. So it looks like Oppo has some work set out to optimize the refresh rate in different apps. I guess the logic behind this refresh rate switching is to save battery, but Oppo has implemented that in a very random way, which I feel is a little illogical. Now, uh, talking about the battery life, I would rate it a solid B+. On a medium kind of usage, I was able to squeeze out around 6 hours of screen on time, which in real life translates to a day worth of endurance for me. And um, I'm guessing Oppo's aggressive battery optimization and the random refresh rate switching have a lot to do with it. So yeah, the battery life is pretty decent here. And with the 80 watt charger that you get inside the box, the phone goes from 0 to 100% in half an hour, which is well on par with what other brands offer these days. So there's nothing much to talk about there. Finally, on my list of good things about the Oppo Reno A Pro is also its camera performance. Granted, it uses the same sensors as the Reno 7 Pro, the optimization has certainly improved this year. With this, the Reno 8 Pro is able to click some really impressive shots. The colors evidently are a little punchy here, but the pictures look very pleasing with good detail levels and decent dynamic range. And I found it to be reliable during all kinds of lighting conditions as well. Even without OIS, the phone can click some sharp nighttime shots. Again, the colors are a little out there with a hint of uh, warm hues, but the contrast and detail levels are on point. So, as I said, you can really rely on this camera to give you good pictures, whether you want to capture a scenery, a picture with your friends, or if you feel like getting creative. I like the portraits from this phone too, but they tend to beautify the subjects a lot, which might not be everyone's cup of tea. I think the portraits come out good enough for the general audience to like and share on social media though. Selfies also look quite nice, but again, the subtle smoothening is there even when you turn the beauty mode off, so the pictures come off a bit soft. I also compared its cameras against the Pixel 6a and my findings comparing these cameras was that the 6a is better in terms of computational photography like in this image where the natural bokeh behind the subject looks better and the overall color calibration looks more real to life. Another example is this image of a controller where the Pixel 6a manages better exposure and dynamic range. But what I can tell you for sure is that even though the overall camera performance on the Reno 8 Pro might not be better than the Pixel 6a, it is certainly better than the likes of other phones in this price segment like the Moto H30 Pro, the Realme GT Neo 3 or even the iCon 9 for that matter. 
Okay, now um, I have praised so many things about this phone so far, but there are certain aspects where it kind of under delivers, like in terms of videography. The max you can shoot from the back camera is up to 4K 30 FPS. The video in this resolution are not bad, they're good enough, but I think at this price point, 4K 60 FPS as well as optical image stabilization should be available. Even for selfie videos, there's only 1080p 30fps option, which I think is quite a bummer since uh, video calling and TikTok are so immensely popular these days. And although the primary camera on the Reno 8 Pro is quite impressive, the ultra wide angle images are just below average in terms of color reproduction, details, and well, overall quality. And um, it's especially bad during low light conditions. Likewise, I also didn't find the speakers on this thing to be the most impressive either. They're loud, yes, but the highs are very sharp here and the stereo separation is not very balanced either. So if you listen to a lot of music, its sound quality is not the most ideal. I would have also appreciated it more if the haptics were a bit refined. I feel like they're very bland, so typing on it is not the most pleasant experience. All right, now we have come to the end of this video and with everything that I've discussed so far, the Reno 8 Pro certainly comes off as a balanced premium mid-range phone. From its performance to design, uh, display, camera and battery, there is very little to complain about this phone. Yes, there are certainly a few things that Oppo could have done better, but those are not something that will massively ruin your smartphone experience. Still in all, I think it would have been better if Oppo had launched a lower 8 128GB version of this phone too. It is currently only available in the 12 to 56GB option, which is uh, more than what many people might need. Had the company done that, the price of the Reno 8 Pro might have dropped to around 40,000, which would have been a sweet deal. At 46,000 Indian rupees, the Reno 8 Pro feels like a slightly pricey offering though. So I would suggest you wait and look for bank discounts or offline offers before buying this one. So guys, that is all for this video. I hope you liked it. And if you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Till then, I'm Pratima Adhikari and I will see you in my next video.